Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the Heart Standard video briefing. Video, let's go for that. Um, I am James Kearney and today I'm joined by Scott McIntosh. Uh, how are you doing, Scott? Yeah, very well. Thanks for having me on, James. Oh, no, always a pleasure to have you on. And it's a big day um, for Heart Show. I suppose yesterday was a big day because we got another two signings in the door. Um, it's... They're both pre-contract agreements, of course, and they are Motherwell midfielder Blair Spittle and Livingston defender James Penrice. But before we get going and we start to dig into it all, just a quick pause to spotlight our new sponsor, MPH Group, the award-winning family-run business excelling in home improvements across the mainland of Scotland. Specialising in bespoke kitchens, bathrooms and high-efficiency boilers, MPH Group brings your dream home to reality. They have recently achieved the prestigious Construction Line Gold, Safe Contractor and ISO certifications, underscoring their commitment to excellence, safety and quality management in all their projects. This accomplishment is a testament to their dedication to providing the best possible service to their clients. They are also proud to announce their latest KBB showroom in Dunfermline, which is now open for appointments. Experience the dedication and craftsmanship that sets MPH Group apart. Visit www.mph.group and see how they can transform your home. So there we go. That, uh, you, you know, yeah, you you know that. that was very good. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Um, so yeah, as I said, today we're, we're going to speak mainly about um, the pre-contract arrivals of Blair Spittle and James Penrice. Obviously, we know that Jan Danda is coming in as well, so we'll probably go on to talk uh, a wee bit about just the club's overall transfer strategy, the policy of trying to get these players in early and the fact that they're all of kind of a largely similar sort of profile you could maybe argue but I guess we'll start off um with well, I guess we'll start in chronological order I suppose so last night we've, we first heard the news that it would be James Penrice is, is a agreed to deal now we should say I don't think this has been officially confirmed by either club yet but I think this is a similar situation similar situation to Yandanda where <laughs> the deal is done it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going ahead, and perhaps the clubs are just wary of um, kind of unsettling the team <clears throat> going into this final run of games, which is completely understandable. So, I guess we'll start off, Scott. Then, can I ask you just what was your initial reaction then when you first saw the news? Um, obviously, it's an area where right now Hearts are pretty well stocked. You look there; you've got Alex Cochrane's playing week in, week out. Just about Stephen Kingsley's also slotted in there as well at times. Um. But this is, is a kind of you know young up and coming player. He's twenty five years old now. Got a few years of Premiership experience under his belt at Livingston. Do, do you think he'll be able to come in and add to the team? Yeah, I think well, it's it's a rumor that's been circulating since the start of the year. Yeah, uh, it doesn't surprise me that we've been looking at that position for for a couple of reasons. I think Alex Cochran's entering the last twelve months of his contract. I would be very surprised if we see an extension to that. Doesn't necessarily mean that he'll leave this summer, but yeah. I think it's fair to say he probably will be away, uh, you know, within the next sort of 12 to 15 months. Stephen Kingsley is still adept at playing, probably more so as a fullback and a four rather than a wing back and a, a sort of five, mm. but he's been relied upon quite heavily at, at centre half this season, uh, particularly with, with Craig Halkett's injury, Kai Rolls International. Uh, sort of commitments as well. So I think between those two, I think it's it's very sort of sound of the club to, you know, to look at other options. And I think what Penrice brings is, first of all, an awareness of the league, uh, mm. which, which all of these sort of free pre-contract signings bring. I don't want to, I don't want to make any sort of wild predictions on any of the free players and what they're going to bring to heart because it, at this level of football, every signing's a risk and it had yeah. and every signing has an element of risk but I think what the club has done very well is minimize that risk by looking at players that are already adapted to this league I think if you look at our our transfer business last summer Frankie Kent was the only one that really came in and, and sort of hit the ground running you know mm. it, it took the likes of Vargas and Neuenhoff a, a few months and you know, as we all well know, round about October, November time, there was a lot of question marks regarding Stephen Naismith. So yeah. I think managers are aware that as much as they would like to be given time to to, to sort of uh, run the rule over new signings and sort of bed them in, doesn't always work that way. 
And I think if you can bring in a few players that are already aware of the league, that's a it's, it's a good start. And again, it shows that the club are you know very proactive and they're already sort of setting their stall out for next season in terms of building on squad numbers as well, given that we'll have those additional European games. Uh, well, exactly. I mean, I think the, the European games are an excellent point to make in that you want to get your squads finalised early, obviously, because <laughs> you're going to have these qualifiers coming around. Obviously, they're massive games. You know, could be potentially a Europa League playoff game in there. Obviously, you, you want to try and go into that with as, as well prepared as you possibly can be. Uh, but John, the, the interesting thing I think you, you picked up on there um, was when you were talking about Cochrane and Kingsley and the fact that Kingsley is quite solid as like a left back and a back four, um, whereas Cochrane's maybe more of a kind of a traditional wing back, you'd say. And I think that James Penrice is someone who probably falls into a fairly similar category. Um, I'm just seeing here in the comments, Jim Ogg saying um, he's excited to get the first hand account on Penrice from James, as I'd imagine he watched him at Thistle. Uh, you're absolutely right, Jim. Yes, he's a player I'm very familiar with. Um, Spittle, too, in fact, actually, because he's also a former uh, former party Thistle player. Um, but yeah, James Penrice, I've, I've, I've watched a lot of him, um, particularly when he's coming through at Thistle. Always quite highly regarded. Um, to be honest, it was a bit of a surprise when he stayed with Thistle when they were demoted down to League One in the COVID season. I think most people thought he'd probably be away to the Premiership at that point. He, he stuck around for another year, got his move to Livingston. And I think that while I think his first two seasons have been pretty solid, but if unspectacular, but then I think when you get to this season in particular, has seen a real upturn in performances and a bit more consistency with him. And I think the main reason for that is in his first two seasons, he spent a lot of time getting shifted around the team. Sometimes he was at left back, sometimes he was left mid, sometimes centre mid, sometimes he was playing on the right, even. Whereas this season, he seems to be in a sustained run at left wing back with a back three behind him. And I think that that's his best position. I think that gets the most out of him because when you watch Penrice, he's a... He is a technical player. He likes to get forward. He's got a great cross on him, always has. But I'd say the area of his game that's maybe there's question marks over or it's maybe lacking a bit is his defensive his defensive ability in those kind of 1v1 situations. So I think that having him challenge Cochrane at left wing back is fantastic. I think that makes a lot of sense. But then you've also, like you say, got that option for Kingsley to come in, uh, play left back in the back four for those games where there's going to be a bit more asked. Um, of Hearts from a kind of defensive perspective, but I think certainly on the ball, he offers a lot. Uh, I think he's something a bit different to what Hearts have already got. He's really good at kind of crossing from deep as well, which is something that um, Cochrane's maybe not has been not the best at, to be, to be fair. Um, and I think it's just a really smart piece of business. So uh, I should say that we'll have an article going up on the website tomorrow morning looking at Penrice. Um, we're going to be a big in-depth piece looking at uh, looking at the stats, his progression at Livy over the last few seasons, hopefully get some insight as well from some people that have worked with him in the past and um, some video analysis in there as well. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. And then on Monday, we'll have a piece on Blair Spittle. Um, so let, let's move on to Spittle then, Scott, because I, I feel like there's probably a wee bit more to be said here. Because uh, I think when we, when we look at uh, someone like Penrice, it's quite obvious where he comes into the squad. It's quite obvious kind of what he's good at, what he could, what he could work on. Blair Spittle, on the other hand, I was I was looking earlier on, and I was kind of looking at where he's played this season, and the answer would be pretty much everywhere. By the looks of it, I mean, I was looking. He's played attacking mid, centre mid, right mid, left mid, even at number six occasionally as well, and he's a bit of a an all rounder in that sense, I suppose. Yeah, and and I think what you can what you can see with Spittle and Penrice is a. I think what the club are trying to do or what Stephen Naismith is trying to do is make sure that he's getting players in that are, that are fairly versatile mm. to try and complement what's already in the squad. He's, he's talked recently, we've, we've seen it when he's talked about, you know, trying to adapt the games of uh, Cammy Devlin and Aidan Denham so that they can play a number of positions in midfield. He's talked about Alex Cochran making a bit of a progression into centre midfield as well. And I think, obviously, because of some of the injury problems that we've faced down the years, He's clearly wanting to make sure that there's, you know, there's able replacements all over the park. And also helps him be flexible uh, with regards to changing from a four to a three as well and, and right. changing his system uh, dependent on the opponent. So I think Spittle definitely falls into that. Again, him and Penrice, you know, they've got that trajectory of spending some time in the lower leagues. Mm. So they're working their way up, similar to the likes of Forrest and Shankland have already done. So I think there is a... 
there's a career tra- trajectory there where we're trying to sign players mid to late twenties. We're trying to get players either who are entering or in the middle of their sort of peak seasons. So, although we can't say with any degree of certainty yet that any of these players are going to be successes, what we can say with a degree certainty is that the club has a a sound and and consistent pathway to their transfer activity just now. They've clearly got an, an an identity with that and what they're trying to look for. So I think that's the one that's been the one real positive out of the last 24 hours is that it's very clear that the club are looking at a certain sort of pathway to, to bring in players into the club and progressing them. And hopefully these players come in and and you know the the sort of add to the the sort of quality that we already have within the ranks. Uh, absolutely because I think that the the best case in point for how these kind of players can come in and then develop is probably someone like Alan Forrest, where you look at him, where obviously he came from Livingston at what is it, kind of 26, 27 at the time, I think. He came in, you know, that first season or so, maybe didn't quite set the header, like, you know, still getting up to speed. But then this season's obviously really kicked on to the point where he's one of the first names in the team sheet at the moment. You know, he's player, the Premiership Player of the Month in January. And he's really solidified himself as a key player in that role in the quite yet like you say it's taken a bit of time you know similar to like like you were saying earlier about the summer some of the summer signings like Neuenhoff and Vargas it has taken time for them to bed in but I think the the encouraging thing is when you look at these players and, and particularly in Spittle's case they will get that time because there are so many options in that area of the park as well and like yeah his versatility helps it because he can play so in so many positions I look at him, I think, I'd imagine he's been brought in as either a number 10 or as a, as a, cent, as a centre midfielder rather than a winger. I think yeah. that's probably where he's been doing his best work for Motherwell this season. Um, and when you look at it again, I, mean, just looking, I was just kind of like looking for some of his stats for um, this season, how he's been getting on. You know, so he's played almost 3,000 minutes, which is, you know, so he's played a, a hell of a lot of football and it's a great sample size for us because it's nice and big. And he's scoring... He's either providing a goal or an assist um, every two games, pretty much. Um, so it's you know zero point four seven per ninety. Um, the only parts player, for instance, is contributing more than that. Shankland, he's on zero point five eight, and then after that, there's no one else. So you know, in terms of his just the goals and assists he's providing, he's doing at a spectacular rate already. Um, and you look at some of under the hood stats as well. Like um, I know some people turn the nose up at it, but you know I'm a big nerd and I like this stuff. You look at his expected assists, which is um, Kind of expected goals, you know, same sort of idea of where it's all about how good the chances you create are. And you know, out of the when you look at the whole premiership, uh, Danny Armstrong's the only non-old firm player who has a higher expected assist per game than uh, Spittle, who's actually also tied coincidentally on zero point two two per game with Danda as well. So again, these are two of the most creative players in the league when you look at the kind of under the hood stats. And Hearts have managed to get them both on free transfers, um, and by by all kinds as well by beating rival Premiership clubs to their signatures as well. So I think that particularly in in, in Spittle's case, I think you know you're getting a really proven performer. I think that some of the things I really like about him that I think that this Hearts seems maybe lacking at times. Things like I think his set piece deliveries are excellent. Um, you know, his corner kicks because that, obviously that's an area where Hearts have been underperforming this season defensively. The Hearts brilliant at set pieces going forward, attacking not so much. And the other thing as well I really like about him is that he can really hit a ball from distance. He, he's got a great, he's got a great shot on him. And again, that's something that when you look around the Hearts midfield this season, like how many times have we seen maybe the ball drops to see Benny like twenty five yards from goal, and they hear the whole crowd going like shoot, shoot, but it's like. He's not going to shoot though, is he? That's not his game. Whereas like someone like Spittle, if you if that falls to him and you get hear the whole crowd going shout and shoot, the chance he might score a goal of the season contender. Yeah, and uh, progressive passes is definitely something mm. that I think he can bring to the team. Uh, Danda as well, and and obviously Danda from dead ball situations as well. I think is another another sort of key add to the to the squad overall. And I think. We obviously, none of us really know yet what's going to happen with Lauren Shankland over the next few months. Aye. I think what we can say is that given how long we had to wait for someone like Shankland to come along and hit the numbers that he has, it'd be a big ask to replace Shankland with someone who's going to have that same number of goal involvements. Mm. So I think bringing in players like Spittle who can provide even 
maybe 10, 12 goal involvements between goals and assists per season is massive to the club. Like that, that's a huge out the three, I would say he's probably the one that fans should probably get more most excited about, just in mm. terms of where he is, in mm. terms of probably consistency as well. Danda has had good and bad spells this season. He's had times where he's been in and out of the Ross County squad. I think we spittle. He's now had a really sort of consistent two seasons at Motherwell. And I can't see any reason why he can't continue that. And like you say, I think that could come from a deeper position. I don't think it's a case to say that he will definitely play across those sort of three positions. Uh, uh, sort of advanced positions in midfield. It could be that that they can sort of put him in uh, and sort of play him alongside someone like Benny uh, in sort of centre mid, particularly for certain fixtures that we've pointed at at times this season where we've had the bulky possession, but there's there's not really been any sort of progressive passing coming from that deeper area. So I I you know I want to be I want to be happy about the spittle one especially that just seemed to come out of nowhere. I think mm. like Ben Rice was one that had been talked about in the background for a couple of months now. But the spittle one really has came out of nowhere. St. Mirren, you know, you speak to St. Mirren fans, I think they were fairly confident that they were going to get them tied up. So again it it proves that I mean, don't get me wrong, money talks, and I'm yeah. sure we're offering higher packages for these three players than what they were potentially going to get offered elsewhere. But there is a degree continuity at the club that you're not seeing elsewhere in the league just now. If you look at our direct competitors, both Hibs and Aberdeen have been very sort of up and down. They've had a lot of managerial changes over the last two or three seasons. And regardless, say, you know, whether you think certain Hearts managers have had too much time or not enough time, I think you can agree that Ann Budge has been pretty consistent over the last 10 years and allowing people time and, and sort of backing them in the transfer market as well. So I think these things all tie in. You know, it, it helps on top of the financial package that we can obviously mm. offer. Offering European football and offering a bit of continuity will help these guys as well. No, absolutely. And I think as well, particularly in the case of for like Spitto and Danda, you know, these are guys who... Right now they're playing for teams where they maybe don't see as much as the ball as they'd maybe like. You know, they're having, you know, they're um it's certainly in Penrice's case too. In fact, that's definitely the case. <laughs> you know, it's like again, these are all players where I think they've excelled at teams kind of towards the bottom, lower end of the premiership, with all due respect, um, to the other teams involved. And I think they've all proved proven that they are ready for that step up. You know, they've all excelled at that level. And these are exactly the kind of players that you do want to be targeting as you know, if if hearts are serious about really establishing themselves as the third force in Scotland about about trying to close that gap between uh, Hearts and the old firm. Then you know these are the kind of savvy additions you need. Just you know really solid professional players who, like you say, you can't guarantee they're going to be successes. Of course you can't, but you can lower and mitigate the risks by signing guys who've got a proven track record and who are good tactical fits for the team. And I think that's what we see from all three of, of these players. So. I do, I do think it is, like you say, it is, it is really encouraging. And of course, it helps as well with just fleshing out the squad for a European campaign next season where we know that it is demanding. We know it's, you know, you can't necessarily play the same players, you know, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday. There's going to have to be variation. And we also know as well that Nate Smith does like to have certain players for certain games. You know, that that's a big thing he talks about a lot is the fact that he wants to be having players, you know, certain players will be suited to certain games that some others won't be. And again, I think that Spittle just gives you something that the Hearts don't already have, for instance. Um, I, I think when you look at his kind of, his kind of statsy profile, um, it's quite distinct from what Hearts have already got. The most like for like players, probably someone like George Grant, where statistically, at least on paper, Spittle looks like a pretty significant upgrade. Again, that we'll have that in an article on Monday. But again, it is, it is just this, it does kind of build up this moment, this continue this momentum that hearts, you know, they're not willing to just wait <clears throat> and see what happens. You know, they want to be proactive in the market, watch and get their business done early. And um, I guess the question now is, will there be any more on the way in? I, mean, I can see in the comments, um, da -da -da, sorry, where is it? I've got a comment here from Jamie Flatman asking, any other rumours on pre-contracts? Seen a few spurious rumours on Twitter suggesting Dan Phillips might sign. Also, no Bacchus is out of contract and could be a good signing. Um, 
so yeah, I think either of those players would be fantastic signings for Hearts. I think Kiana Bacchus, um he scored an absolutely wonderful goal for Australia the other day, actually. I, I, I don't think he meant it, but he absolutely scudded it in the top bin. But... No, it looked like a cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Joe, we'll give it to him. Who cares, Joe? It was an absolute screamer. You know, good, good on him. Um, in fact, that's the same game that Kai Rowe scored as well, his first international goal for Australia. Yeah, he looked as shocked as anyone, I think, when that one went in as well. He did, he did. But Joe, yeah, good for him. I'm pleased for him. I'm absolutely delighted Yeah, him, definitely. But... So I think particularly with those two players, and we'll talk about them. And um, so we got Dan Phillips uh, at St Johnston, and then Keanu Bacchus at St Mirren. Both are out of contract at the end of the season as well. Both, again, I think are probably falling in similar categories as the three players we've just talked about. That in that they've excelled at the clubs they're at. They're probably due a bigger move. To be honest, I think I could see Hart signing one of those players, but only if Benny goes. To, I, yeah. I, that, that's what I would look at because they're both kind of natural number sixes and for all the, the heart strongs looking the heart squads looking really strong at the moment on paper the one area where I look at it and go they could really use some more reinforcements there is that number six role particularly if Benny does leave in the summer yeah I, I think out of those two names that were mentioned I think Phillips Phillips is the one that I could potentially see uh, being a target I, mm. again dependent on the the Beningame situation, uh, it's just going to be a case of wait. I think the club have already sort of set their stall out on that. Dare to have him, whether he's keen to stay is, a, is another thing entirely, uh, down to sort of personal family reasons or whatever that may be. Phillips, quite like the look of. Uh, I think, I mean, Bacchus, I do like Bacchus. I just, I think we knew in Hoff and Devlin and that all in there. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure he would bring anything new to the table uh, so I'd be very surprised if we were looking at Keanu Bacchus uh, but but definitely Phillips is somebody who I'd be more than happy to see come in uh, even if it's an alternative to, to Beningame even someone mm. that, can, that can alternate with Benny you know Benny has had because he's had such a, a bad injury he's had a couple of occasions this season where he's looked on the verge of breaking down and, and sort of fatiguing and because we've not really had a natural replacement in there we've <clears throat> kind of had to persist with him at times mm. so yeah i think i think phillips is one that i'd like to see us bring in uh but i, I suppose we'll just wait and see it's i, I suppose the only and, I, and i'm saying this you know tongue firmly in cheek but the, the only sort of negative for all this activity over the last couple of months is the fact that come the summer it might be quite a, a quiet summer maybe for incomings i think with this lovely activity i think there will be people leaving in the summer mm. Yeah, but but yeah, it could be it could be quite a sort of uh, quiet summer for Hearts fans if we if we continue down this path for the next couple of months. Ah, you know, it's, it's all quite all quite unsettling. I'm sure, quite, all quite unfamiliar to be like just quite calm and relaxed going into the window. <laughs> but obviously, like we say, Shanklin, that's its own thing. You know, I'm sure that'll be keeping keeping us up at night for a good wee while. And there was one other comment as well. Where was it? Um, Angus Baxter. Asking, do you think we could go for Armstrong? Now, I think personally, I think that someone like Danny Armstrong, he's not out of contract at the end of the season. I know that at the start of last season, Kelly were after, you know, upper six figures for him. That valuation's only going to have grown. I mean, that'll be, you'd have to imagine they're looking for at least a million at this point, yeah. which at that point, I would think, is he worth it? Probably, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a fantastic player. Can I see Hearts realistically parting with that level of cash for a Premiership player, particularly when Kelly will probably bump up the asking price because it's a divisional rival? Probably not. I, I think it might be a, a wee bit beyond Hearts' reach, but I don't know. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things here that you've already mentioned. I, I think, I think Hearts would be reluctant to pay that sort of transfer fee. Uh, added on to that. I think if you're going to spend that sort of money at our level, it's somebody who's going to be guaranteed a game week in, week out. I think mm. because of our alternating formations between the four and the three, I don't think you could guarantee Danny Armstrong that level of game time. So for me, I think it's more imperative that we, we spend a bit of money and get a proper right wing back in. You know, mm. somebody who's going to cement that place. Uh, and and sort of you then got maybe Natty Atkinson in as a sort of backup to that who can come in occasionally, but that's where I'd like to see any sort of money spent would be finally fig, you know sorting out this right wing back problem. 
So that's where I would prefer to see it. Uh, I know some people would maybe say, well, you know, Armstrong could maybe play there. And he has done for Kelly. You know, it's a formation that Kelly have, have played on quite a few occasions. But for me, no. I'd, I'd, I'd be reluctant to see us spend that type of money on Danny Armstrong. Aye. So there you have it. Yeah. So um, I'd, just, I'd quite like to see him. But again, it's just, I don't think that the finances quite line up. Um, oh, just one, one last wee comment there. I've just noticed from Jim Ogg. Someone asking, is a strain out of contract? He always seems to have turned up against us. Uh, I believe he is. Uh, so that, that's yeah. Niren, right back, Ryan Strain. Uh, yeah, another Aussie as well, I believe. That'd be a, another one for the collection. But yeah, certainly he's a player who I think I could certainly see Hearts going for. I think that he's you know he's big, he's fast, he's strong. He's very athletic, getting up and down um, that right wing for St Mirren. And he's also got a decent final ball on him as well. But I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on, on Yeah, on he's an interesting one. I, I think in that wing-back role, he's... Mm. He, He's technically very gifted. You know, he's he's a very good footballer, first and foremost, away from what position he plays. Again, maybe similar to Penrice, whether he fits into a flat back four system, I'm, mm. I'm not too sure. Yeah. And I think that's something that would potentially go against him. But again, out of contract, I'm sure I'm sure he's somebody we've probably considered at, at the very least. Uh, but you don't know, maybe he's, he sees himself going down south. Who knows? And he has, <clears throat> unfortunately, this season, he's had his fair share of injury problems as well, unfortunately. So he's, it could be that he ends up signing an extension at St Mirren because there's maybe just not enough mm. interest going because of those injuries. But but yeah, I, I can I can understand why people are, are discussing him because he's when he has played, he's definitely put us to the sword on a couple of occasions at least. So I can understand why Hearts fans have remembered him. Absolutely. And just one final question, and um, this one's from Angus Baxter. If we are plundering bottom six team players, who from Hibs could we take? <laughs> so, right, let's just let's just look at it seriously, okay? If there was anyone you would take from Hibs, I think no, nobody, nobody defensively. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you sure? Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's got so many wild options at the back. You know, Lewis Miller, not nah, just mm. yeah. I, We've got enough problems at right back without adding Lewis Miller to that. I think, you know, there's definitely... There, there's players in the Hibs team that I like, but I don't know whether they would fit into the Harps team. So, Joe Newell, for example. Joe Newell's a really good player, and he's done really well at Hibs. He's a really consistent performer, but I couldn't see where you would fit him in. And obviously, age profile as well. I don't think mm -hmm. he's somebody the club would look at in terms of age profile. Uh, same with Jordan Obita. Jordan Obita has actually had a really consistent season at left back, but again, age profile. I think we're looking more towards mid twenties and somebody who's turning thirty. I mean, up front, yeah, they've they've got a a good list of options. I actually really like Dylan Venny. I think a lot of the a lot of the issues beyond behind his drought since Montgomery's come in has been down to how he's been utilised. Mm. He's been asked to sort of drop deep quite a lot. I do think there's a player in there that could easily hit 15 to 20 goals at this level. So he's somebody, yeah, that you'd potentially look at, uh, especially if the Shanklin situation sort of changed over the summer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, ultimately, we're not going to sign anyone from Hibs. But but yeah, if you were having a bit of fun with it, that's some of the names you would maybe potentially look at. Aye, but I think you're right. I don't think any of them have to worry too much about any bids coming oh. in in the summer. I, I, you know, it'd be a surprise. It'd be a surprise. Um, right, well, Joe, we'll probably finish there because that's just approaching half an hour. Um, so, yeah, just yeah, thanks so much, Scott, for coming on. It's been great chatting, chatting through these deals with you. No um, so, as we say, uh, just a quick recap. So, we've got James Penrice coming in from Livingston. Uh, there's also Dan Danda from Ross County and Blair Spittle from Motherwell. We've already got a piece on the site that was written back in January all about what Jan Danda um, will bring to this team. So I'd urge you to have a look at that. Then tomorrow morning, there'll be a piece all about Penrice. Um, just again, quite an in-depth look at what he brings to the team, what he does well, what, he could, what he's going to have to work on. And then we're going to have the exact same thing again on Monday for Blair Spittle. Again, we'll have a big deep dive looking at exactly what he'll bring to the team and probably in Spittle's case, more importantly, where he fits in to that team. So plenty of stuff to keep your eye out for. Uh, we've also got an um, exclusive interview coming out over the weekend. Uh, I think that's going out on Sunday morning, I believe, with Neil McFarlane. So that's worth keeping an eye out for as well. 
um, because even though the international break is going, we don't take a break here at Heart Standard. We keep going. So, uh, yeah, plenty of content to keep you guys busy. And anyway, we'll join you. I think when we'll see you next, probably Monday. Monday afternoon, we'll be back then. So make sure you join us for that. And thank you, everyone, for subscribing. And if you don't subscribe, then hop aboard. There's no better time. Cheers.